We're here once again, another day, meet the coach, meet the school. Scott Knight here with a good friend, Andreas Lindbergh, Dr. Dre, Seton Hall University, head coach, men's soccer, um, pretty big background, a lot of success here locally uh, with LIU Post at the time, also uh, doing fantastic things out east with uh, Southampton United. Southampton Town United. Southampton Town United on the youth side. Uh, and is really making some great progress turning um, Seton Hall around. So let's get into it right away. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, Andreas. Hometown, your youth playing experience, uh, your, your passion, your love for the sport. Um, the positions you played, your career as a youth, and then we'll get into you coming over here uh, sure. to play. Um, thanks for having me, Scott. Appreciate it. Happy to, uh, to join. Um, well, born and raised in Sweden, a small town called Svedala, which is uh, just outside Malmo, um, which is the third biggest city in Sweden. So I started playing my uh, youth soccer there for a small club. Um, Maybe when I was six or seven, uh, my grandpa used to be president of the club back in the day. My dad wow. played there. My younger brother played, you know, very much like uh, any club here on Long Island, very similar pops type of stuff. But as you know, in Europe, it works differently. They had a, you know, a senior team to place in Division Three, which I think was like the fourth division back then. Um, Definitely not a pro level, but, you know, organized. So I started off there playing six or seven and, and stayed with them until I was about 15. Uh, I was coached by a, a yet, yet called Holden Manfred. He was a great guy. Uh, coached me for a long time until I was maybe 13. And then from 13 to 11, to 11 uh, got you know, maybe some higher level coaches that took over. And then when I was... 15 or 16, and I ended up going to Malmo FF, uh, you know, to play for the 16 routine academy teams, which is you know, Malmo played in the Rupa League this year, they played in the Champions League last couple of years, so gave that route a try uh, before I came over here to the States in uh, 1998. That's a, that's long, a, time that's a long time ago. Long time ago. Long time ago. You know, almost 22 so you, years. You played as a nine in Sweden and came over as a nine. Yeah, I came over as a nine. I ended up playing more as a ten when I was here. And, uh, a little bit, a little and bit you nine. went to LIU. LIU Southampton. 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 That's yeah. right. So Twenty-two years ago. Does uh, I remember playing against LIU out there, man? First of all, that drive was the worst, <laughs> and then second of all, I, I I think we I got kicked up and down the field over and over by those guys. So good teams out there, man. South yeah, Canada. I think that was almost really like good the start. If you if you look at it, it's funny, right? Because Southampton was the Colonials, but as far as I'm concerned, they were a bit of a, the pioneers. <laughs> among the first guys to start to recruit international players. And when I came in, actually in 98, but in 99, we had seven Swedes on the team. Wow. Um, you know, which was um, you know, a long time ago. I don't no, think you, guys, you guys were very good. Very, very good out there. We would have some great battles with you know, Southern Connecticut back in 99 and lost in Kredupa all over time there. I'm still not over that loss 20 years later. So let's talk about leading up to you being a college coach, right? You played at Southampton, you finished up at Southampton, and then started coaching, correct? Yeah, you know what? The, the coach we had there, he got let go um, my senior year, actually, uh, around Christmas time or Thanksgiving, actually. Athletic director uh, called me into the office. She wanted to have a word with me, kind of see the lay of the land. And all of a sudden, she asked me if I wanted to take over the team and start coaching. Um, and I had actually one more semester left to go to school. <laughs> and I played tennis for the tennis team. And I was actually committed to play lacrosse as well. So my senior, my eighth semester of school, I ended up taking the spring season as the soccer coach. And I played tennis and my first season of lacrosse in the old nightcap. 
So, uh, you know, and I, I was 23 turning 24 when that semester ended. So I got wow. thrown into deep end right away. My goodness. Time management. <laughs> yeah, people, say that, I, people are used to it. They don't want to do sports in college because they can't, uh, you know, because of time. I don't know. Only if there is a way, if there is a will, there is a way. But yeah, I ended up coaching Southampton then uh, for three years. Um, you know, until unfortunately the campus closed, which was part of the old LIU. Uh, and then from there, I went and coached at Met Oval with a DA for a couple of years. And then went to uh, your old stomping grounds, LIU Post. That's right. And you, came, you came to the right side now. <laughs> I became a pioneer there. Uh, did right. nine years in post. Had a great time. Loved my time. In post. That's right. Some big seasons there, right? Accomplished yeah, a lot right. of trophies. Won a lot of trophies. Yeah, I think five or six conference championships. You know, a couple NCAA, of deep into NCAA tournament also. Yeah, seven times in a row. You know, but yeah, I loved my time. Had a great time in post. Met some lovely people and. And all the players that I coach were really, really yeah, good. I think players got players got a lot out of you too, right? A lot of individual awards, right? Guys, yeah, it's all of all about guys moved on. Yeah, couple Done of a great job. players of the year. Really, really, really pleased with my time at Post. Yeah, I think uh, you you really put it on the map there, right? For catapulted that into the Division One situation they're in now, really set the table for them. So, and then from there at Post. Right, you got the phone call. I think you actually <laughs> told me you were crossing a bridge, right? Pretty got much. That's call. interesting how that went out. I just booked a trip back to Sweden, uh, you know, for Thanksgiving. I think it was right before Christmas. Going to check it out, and I got a contact by Seton Hall and asked if I had an interest of, of, you know, coming in and interview for the job, and said, "Why not? You know, it's the Big East, and Seton Hall's got, you know, a lot of great history and." I think when I came over here in the end of the 90s, it was St. John's and Seton Hall were the two top dogs in this region. That's really. right. That's um, right. So, yeah, a lot of history. And um, now I'm on the dark side with the, <laughs> with the Jersey people. <laughs> so, right, there's a lot of international kids, domestic kids. You, you've recruited on both sides. We work on both sides of it. For you, what what was the decision for you to come over? Like, what sealed it for you? Why did you decide to to take that experience? You know what I I pursued the whole trying to make it as a professional. Uh, as I said, I played for Malmo, which is a top club in Sweden. Uh, I also spent some time with Grasshoppers in Switzerland. You know, that being the Champions League just a wow, few years yeah. before I was That's there. Right, yeah. Um, and I don't think I was really good enough, you know, I, I was good enough to play what everybody called, called semi-pro and get paid a couple of hundred bucks for a game or whatnot, but I don't think I was good enough to make it as a proper pro player. So I uh, figured, why not? I've you know, heard about the States and the opportunity to be able to go get an education at the same time as you play, which is rare and in Europe, to be able to do both. Um, Figure why not? It would be a great opportunity to do. And you know, the rest of the I, I was really only going to come for a year to check it out, see if I even liked it. Um, and that's 22 years ago now. I obviously loved it, loved my time. It's the best four years of my life. I encourage anybody that's on that bubble to, to make it um, or not, you know, to come over here. It's the standard now compared to 20 years ago. Everything is so much better. Uh, but yeah, it's a great, great opportunity. Why Southampton? Connection with the Swedes, you know. Uh, one, the goalkeeper there, an all American goalkeeper, I kind of I knew, a well, friend of a friend type of deal. So I went up to see him, and he spoke very highly of it. Closeness to the beach, and you know, I told me it was half an hour outside New York City, uh, <laughs> which is kind of like two hours. <laughs> So, uh, classic, classic. Yeah, classic. I think I've used the same in post actually for a few years. <laughs> but yeah, and that, that was it. You know, I never looked back. I didn't know the difference of Division One and Division Two. If I, if I would have known today what, what I know, I probably wouldn't have ended up going to Southampton. I was recruited by Cincinnati, actually, we spoke about before. And 
Mercer and San Jose and Strasburg in Pennsylvania. So I had a little few different schools that were looking. I at think it. it's unique, also, right at the Division Two level. You get you get a lot of programs that are Division One as far as sports go, right? Oh, as yeah. far as competition goes, I think Southampton truly was right, one of those situations where they could have they could have competed regularly, right at a Division One level, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, like you had Charleston that won it a few times, Division II level, they can compete with Division I. So and I'd say okay. some of the top programs that I had at post certainly would have made a good run run as well. So um, there's some top, top programs in Division II level. All right, let's talk a little bit about Seton Hall, right? We talked about the phone call came in. Tell us a little bit about, you know, getting started. I know there, there's been transition. You guys have been working – Super, super hard over there to change things. Um, uh, I know you're really enjoying it as well. Uh, great staff, right? Two great guys over there with you. Tell, tell us a little bit about, about getting started over there, that making that jump from Division Two to Division One, and, and, and how you're going about things right now. Yeah, you know what? Like, I wasn't chasing it. I was pretty happy at Post. You know, we had been successful – time you know maybe start getting a pitch some some stuff changing there in the upper administration that I wasn't thrilled about uh, but you know I, I was pretty happy at post and, and I wasn't really looking I didn't put myself out there to apply for jobs so when Seton Hall came up initially I thought that's a big jump uh, you know to go from division two into the big east but again you know it's a bit like St. John's and Seton Hall the top two programs when I when I came over here and I went there, you know, pretty relaxed, you know, a little bit of, you know, they have obviously a ton of questions for me and I had a ton of questions for them as well. And when I left there, I certainly fall in love with the place right off the bat. The people that work there are great, great people. They sincerely care about Seton Hall and the student athletes and the whole community. I loved it. So, you know, when I came home, um, you know, after, after that interview, I think it was on a Monday, I was super excited. I couldn't wait. I mean, I hope I had. I thought I had a fair chance. I thought I had done well. And when the call came, um, you know, I was said yes right away. Um, and you know, I haven't looked back since. It's a great place. You know, like I said, I think the biggest asset for us is the people that are working. There. You know, the administration, the whole athletic department, everybody that's the seat. Well, they really love it. I mean, you've been there. You can kind of feel the vibe. It's a family-oriented type of place. Beautiful and, place. Uh, Tremendous yeah. facilities. Brand new field. Yeah, brand new field. Put a new tariff. They did you know, nicer stadiums and press box. And they did a really good job. They, so. tweak, they tweaked it a little bit, right? The, yeah, the, it, it's really, really nice. It came out great. So, uh, you know, I've been there two years now. Uh, it's been a grind. Um, Travel an ungodly amount of miles all over the world. Um, yeah, we keep crossing. Starting, we keep crossing each other. <laughs> yeah. It's starting to pay dividends. I really feel. You know, we now yeah. starting in the fall. Uh, it's going to be you know my team and our team. Everybody that's on the field in the fall is going to be somebody that myself and Ali and Jeff. Did. Um, we have started to set the culture and how we want to play and how we want to act and things that we want to do. And, Academically, we're doing really, really well. We have the top GPA in the Big East. And, uh, really? Yeah. Top GPA? Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. Good yeah, for you, good. man. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. We, no, we, I, me yeah. I remember visiting. I got the invite. I was uh, – I, I felt special for a day. It was awesome, <laughs> man. It was great facilities, right? I got, I got a great tour, and uh, uh, yeah. I, I, was, I was impressed, man. For it, it, tight, small plate, but beautiful, right? Everything well manicured, fantastic people, great that's facilities. Good. So that's awesome. Recruiting-wise, right, you touched base a little bit, traveling a lot. I know you guys obviously internationally, but also domestically as well. I know we keep crossing uh, in the airport at different fields, at different sites. So tell us a little bit about, about how your recruiting goes and – how, how a player fits academically, soccer-wise, socially, financially, like those, those unique ways that you get guys to fit. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we don't care really where you're from. You know, I think it's a misconception sometimes that people are like, oh, we're going to get 
Swedish player, or Ali is from England, and all he wants to do is get an English guy, or Jeff is from New York, and all he wants to do is get New Yorkers. So we don't care. You know? There's a few prerequisites, really. Number one is we want you to be a good person. You know, so we really do our due diligence of interviewing or talking to high school coaches, club coaches, anybody, you know, in the industry to try to get the right fit. And the first thing I is a guy. Uh, so that's extremely important. And then you touched on it, you know, having a strong academic background, obviously, helps. it's so much easier to recruit. Um, we only have 9.9 scholarships as a soccer team and figuring the roster size of 26 to make close to 30. It's tough. Um, so if there is an academic you know, scholarship available for somebody, it just makes that player so much more lucrative to, to try to recruit. Um, but then obviously the skill set, you know, what are we looking for? We're looking for somebody that's very comfortable and technical on the ball, tactically sound. Um, and then have a winning mentality. Those are things that we're really looking for. Uh, and we're getting there. You know, we've had some good results the last couple of years, and I think we have to play or two away from really competing in the East. Yeah, I know, um, speaking a little bit before we started this recording, right, it looks like you got a really good group coming in. Last year you took advantage of, of guys maybe a little bit older, combining that with, with some younger guys locally, some international, some transfers. So what, um, what do you think the season coming up has in store for you, right? What, improving on the previous two. Uh, I'm sure you're excited, like you had mentioned, about having now your guys. Right. What, what does that kind of look like, taking a decent amount of new faces? You had a couple that came in and, in January, and then piecing that all together for what next season looks like. And then just quickly touch base a little bit on the following year, right? Projecting what people are listening, how maybe they can get involved with you for the following year. Yeah, so to start, you know, it's, as I said, my third year coming up. So now the players that we started recruiting three years ago, they're going to be juniors. You know, we had one or two guys that transferred in after their freshman year or two, they're going to be seniors. So those guys are like the core guys. Yeah. Meaning that they know what to expect. They know what it's about. It's our guys. So the leadership now, I think, is already started this past spring. Even though we didn't get a chance to play in any games, but we're in six weeks there. And you can really tell that the atmosphere around the team, the leadership of those guys are exactly where, where we want it to be. Um, and now we, we got some really strong recruits that we've signed from all over the world, really. Uh, some local kids, you know, we have a guy coming in from Cincinnati University, which the orange kid we're super excited about. You know, he can almost walk to school, to school. Um, and, you know, all over. So I think that we can definitely be competing in the Big East. You know, it's this year was the second best conference in the country. Georgetown obviously won a national championship. There are no gimme games, but uh, we're hoping to be more consistent and compete and, and, you know, make the Big East playoffs. And I think it's a real, real fair chance to do that. Um, and then for 2021, well, they're looking, you know, it's going to be interesting what the recruiting landscape is going to be now with the DA folding and, the DIA has really been a major focus of ours. You know, we have we have a player from the Red Bulls. We have a couple of TSF. You know, we have some local guys that we've been looking at. And now, you know, what's going to happen? We're a bit unsure about that. Um, it's it's a crazy time for youth soccer in that way. Um, but you know, we we put on ID clinics. You know, there's actually four guys on our roster currently that we signed from our ID clinics. I know. Again, some people maybe use it as a money maker. You know, we make it really cheap so people can come because it's not for us. It's, to, it's not the end goal is to make money, is to be able to identify guys that maybe we didn't have a chance to see uh, before and also a chance for us to coach them. So I think that's a, a good way to get yourself in front of us, attending one of our ID clinics and then follow up with your schedule so we can see you play whenever whenever soccer is coming back up. Perfect. Any any last piece of advice? We'll wrap this call up. Any last piece of advice for for kids for Seton Hall wanting to talk to Jeff, talk to Ali, speak with you? I know you mentioned the ID camp. Anything you would want to get across 
to those guys, domestic, international, for for season? Yeah, I, mean, I think you know, sending us an email with a, with a, some highlights is is a great first step, you know, and then follow up again. Um, you know, we get hundreds a week. I mean, there's it's a crazy amount of emails that we get every week from players, but it's still the best way of communicating. Quick email, you know, with a three four minute highlight video. If we like that. And there, there's we can jump on that and ask for full games and follow up and watch them live. That's the way it goes at the moment, um, you know. And I know that you guys, you and Mark, are great resources as well. So, thank you, excellent, Jay. Thank you so much for your time. We wish you the best for this upcoming season. Stay well, stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, looking for big things for you guys, right, in the Big East. So. You too. Thanks, Thanks Scott, Scott, for having me. I'm a little disappointed you weren't wearing a scarf today. But... <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, buddy. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Ciao. Take care.